Hello students, welcome to Adi Chemistry's online coaching. Today we will explore the hybridization and bonding in the ammonia molecule and uncover the reasons for its distinct pyramidal shape. I am Aditya Vardhan, the founder of adichemistry.com Varangal. I encourage you to ask questions in the comment section below. Before dealing with hybridization part, let us examine the bonding in the ammonia molecule using the Lewis model. In this molecule, the central atom is nitrogen. It contributes three unpaid electrons for bond formation while each hydrogen atom contributes one electron resulting in three bonds formed by nitrogen atom. However, the Lewis model alone does not provide insights into molecular shapes or bond angles. To understand these aspects, we need to employ the valence bond theory and the concept of hybridization originally proposed by Linus Pauling. Let us begin by examining the electronic configuration of a nitrogen atom. You know that its atomic number is 7 and in the ground state, its electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2 and 2p3, which can also be expressed as 1s2, 2s2, 2px1, py1 and pz1. This configuration reveals 5 valence electrons of which only three are unpaired, allowing nitrogen to form three covalent bonds. However, before participating in the bond formation, nitrogen undergoes hybridization to enhance the stability of the molecule. The nitrogen atom undergoes sp3 hybridization in the ground state by using 1s orbital and 3 of p orbitals of second subshell. With only 4 atomic orbitals participating in the hybridization, only 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals are created. Remember, the number of hybrid orbitals formed is equal to the number of atomic orbitals participating in the hybridization. These hybrid orbitals are arranged tetrahedrally in space around the nucleus of the nitrogen atom making angles of 109 degrees 28 minutes with each other. This tetrahedral arrangement is the most stable configuration for four orbitals in space. These hybrid orbitals are subsequently occupied by five electrons. Following Hund's rule, initially all of the four hybrid orbitals are filled with one electron each. And only after that, the fifth electron pairs up. And this results in one fulfilled and three partially filled sp3 hybrid orbitals. The half filled sp3 hybrid orbitals form sigma bonds by overlapping with the half filled s orbitals of hydrogen atoms. This results in the creation of three sigma sp3 s bonds around the central nitrogen atom. It is also worth noting that sigma bonds are created when the overlapping of orbitals happens along the internuclear axis of the atoms involved in the bond formation. Now there are four electron pairs around the nitrogen atom. Among them, the electron pair that is not participating in the bond formation is referred to as a lone pair. While those involved in the bond formation are referred to as bond pairs. A lone pair is attracted by only one nucleus, hence it occupies more space and exerts stronger repulsion on other electron pairs compared to the bond pairs. 
For clarity, we represent bond pairs with lines instead of using orbital diagrams. Due to stronger repulsions between lone pairs and bond pairs, compared to bond pair bond pair repulsions, the bonds are slightly pushed away from the lone pair. And this results in a decrease in the H and H bond angle to 107 degrees from 109 degrees 28 minutes. This is how the ammonia molecule takes on a pyramidal shape. We can also describe its structure as tetrahedral with one lone pair on nitrogen atom. However, when discussing its shape, it is commonly referred to as pyramidal. That's all for now. Visit adhikemistry.com for more information on this topic or search for adhikemistry hybridization. I hope this presentation helped you in understanding this concept. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can also find links to worksheets and other study material in the description section. If you find it difficult to reach them, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments section or drop an email to adhikmg at gmail.com.